Hello, friends. Welcome to Science Talk. I am your host and resident oceanographer, Jim Massa. I want to discuss with you, uh, it's kind of be, uh, you know, just a quick overview of a video. I'll have a longer one on the ocean, state of the ocean coming up soon. And uh, I want to cover this uh, tweet by uh, uh, Peter Carter. And uh, here's his quote here. Accelerating catastrophic ocean warming, oceanic warming pervasive, surface to abyssal, long-term trend accelerating. This decreases ocean carbon sink, increases atmospheric carbon dioxide, and ocean warming leads to feedbacks that threatens life. And he links uh, this article here, which is really to an abstract, and I'll cover that momentarily. It's be the article's behind a, a paywall. But let's see if we can pull up this and look at this graphic he's got in here for a bit. Okay. And it's based on an October 2022 paper by Chang. Now, he's the gentleman that has been uh, doing the yeoman's work on uh, analyzing and measuring and quantifying and putting it all together, all the ocean heat that's going on. So at a rate of warming, these are kind of like uh, highlight points from, his, from this paper here. The rate of warming increased from the 60s to the 2010s. Observed area average warming is largest in the Atlantic Ocean and Southern Oceans. The Pacific is projected to be the largest heat reservoir owing to its size. Now, if you recall, uh, last year when I did the ocean update, uh, ocean heat content update video, I showed you that huge blob uh, in, the Pacific, in the North Pacific. What he's basically saying is that due to, when you look at how much warming per se cubic meter, even, even with AMOC and all that Greenland melt there, the Atlantic Ocean and the Southern Oceans, observed area average, those are the largest. Pacific has huge warming, huge heat content due to its size. Look at this statement right here. Ocean warming is irreversible this century. W-A-S-F, folks. With this heat, anthropogenic CO2 is also absorbed and transported, leading to a synchronous increase of ocean heat content and ocean acidification. However, through increased stratification and reduced uptake capacity and efficiency, warming decreases the efficiency of the oceanic carbon sink, further enhancing atmospheric CO2 and ocean warming, i.e. a positive feedback. And I have been saying these very points for how long? Ocean warming has extensive impacts that pose risks to marine ecosystems and society. Okay. In addition, ocean ecosystems and biological processes are also affected by ocean warming, and these then alter the carbon uptake and storage. Thus, ocean warming threatens the fundamental conditions that make the Earth conducive to sustaining life. Think about that. Okay. Now, you've heard me say that, you know, when you look at prior mass extinction events in like seven, uh, six out of the seven prior mass extinction events, when looking at the mass extinction in the ocean, there were one or two of the following four factors was sufficient to create mass extinction or great redu reduction in numbers, definitely, or reduction in taxa. Uh, warming oceans. Acidifying oceans, stratification, decrease net primary productivity. 
All four are taking place right now. Add in plastic pollution, overfishing, and we're basically killing the oceans. Okay, let's first take a look at this one here. Now, this is the total ocean heat content. Oh, let, I'm not really able to, unfortunately, enlarge these diagrams. Oh, my computer's not liking it. But this here, this is the total ocean heat content change in zettajoules. And it's looking at a baseline of 05 to 2019. So compared to this baseline, look what's going on here. Oh, and by the way, this shows the two possible pathways here. The uh, the pinkish color is the ocean heat content, and that is basically what's happening. And this is if you constrain the heat content. In other words, if... Uh, release of human uh, uh, anthropogenic uh, activity, greenhouse gases, uh, was reduced or ended. Well, it's not going to really end anytime soon. So we're on track with this pink curve here, which you can clearly see is an exponential curve. This is showing basically temperature anomalies and what you are seeing is basically stratification you can see we got very strong stratification taking place from zero down to 2000 meters and the next series of graphs are just showing different attacks of projections but What's important to look at here is figure one, the role of ocean warming in the climate system. Now, again, I wish I could enlarge this, I can't, but you see these little red arrows that indicates a global increase. A little green arrow is a global decrease. So what's increasing? What's increasing is rainfall, tropical cyclone intensity, concentration of CO2, impact of the ENSO cycle, the Earth's energy imbalance. What's also a critical in part of that is increased evaporation. Increased evaporation puts more moisture in the air so you get more precipitation. And that's what this is indicating. We're going to see increased coastal flooding, increased coastal erosion. And you're going to see into the land increased saltwater intrusion, right? Basically, you're going to get brine water instead of fresh water in your aquifers, in your water table. That affects crops. So what is decreasing? Sea ice, ice sheets, oxygen concentration in the water, okay. density, fisheries and aquacultural systems, ocean ecosystems, and biodiversity. In other words, we're losing them. Okay. Other things that are increasing, marine heat waves, increased sea level, increased stratification. This is all being affected. And this then spills over to the climate system itself. The oceans are really the drivers of the climate system. Yes, it's coupled with the atmosphere, but it's, you know, look at the planet. Covered in, 70% of it is covered in water. That's your driver. So this is kind of a synopsis. Now, let's take a peek over at this abstract. And this appeared in Nature Reviews, Earth and Environment. Is was published, uh, you know, that's that same paper that is covered here. That's the published date, 18 October, 2022. This is just the abstract. It's behind a paywall, an expensive paywall. Okay. 
and Chang uh, et al., a whole bunch of co-authors on this. Changes in ocean heat content provide a measure of ocean warming with impact on the Earth's system. This review synthesizes estimates of past and future uh, ocean heat content changes using observations and models. The top 2,000 meter of the global ocean has significantly warmed since the 1950s, gaining 351 plus or minus basically 60 zettajoules. Of course, the zettajoule is 10 to the 21 joules from 1958 to 2019. The rate of warming increased from less than 5 to about 10 zettajoules per year from the 60s to the 2010s. Observed area average warming is largest in the Atlantic Ocean and Southern Oceans at 1.42 plus or minus 0.09 and 1.40 plus or minus 0.09 times 10 to the 9 joules per square meter. Yeah, that's what those, all that symbols mean, okay. respectively. So that's for the Atlantic. So the 1.42 plus or minus 0.09 is for the Atlantic. 1.4 plus or minus 0.09 is for the Southern Oceans. Pretty close. Almost, almost the same for both. And that's for the upper 2,000 meters over 1958 to 2019 time period. These observed patterns of heat gains are dominated by heat redistribution. Observationally constrained projections suggest that historic ocean warming is irreversible this century, with net warming dependent on the emission scenario, kind of referring to that uh, to the little chart there with the pink and the blue curve okay basically if 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 uh, greenhouse gas emissions were to stop or slow you're still going to get at least a blue curve which means the oceans are still going to warm but what, what we're on path now is for is the pink curve right that's what we're on path now okay. we're on path this way we're still going to have warming. That's what I mean when I say it's irreversible. By 2100, projected warming in the top 2,000 meters is two to six times that observed so far, ranging from 1,030 in a range of 839 to 1,228 zettajoules for a low emission scenario to 1,874 1,000, a range of 1,637 to 2,109 zettajoules for a high emission scenario. Now, we're just packing the heat into the ocean. So the low from 1030 to the upper 1874 with the appropriate ranges around it. The Pacific is projected to be the largest heat reservoir owing to its size, but area average warming remain strongest in the Atlantic and Southern Oceans. Ocean warming has extensive impacts that pose risks to marine ecosystems and society. The projected changes necessitate a con con continuation and improvement of observations and models along with better uncertainty uh, estimation. And we went through, we went through with just some of the implications and the effects are going to be. So overall, the situation is not good for the oceans. This, you know, these continue with the warming acidification stratification. You're going to see a decrease in net primary productivity. You're going to start seeing collapse of uh, marine ecosystems. And don't forget, phytoplankton provide 55 to 80 percent of atmospheric oxygen. If they start collapsing, atmospheric oxygen will decrease, which is already being measured. This is not good, folks. W-A-S-F. Now, I just came across uh, Chang's et al. Uh, January 2023 paper. I'm, I'm in the middle of, of examining that and studying it. And I will do a deep dive video on that paper in a future point. So I wanted to bring you this State of the Oceans update or at least as of October 2022. And uh, yeah, 
not good. So until next time, thank you for your time.